All right, so please give a warm welcome to Pedro Cabrera, who's talking about SDR against smart TVs, URL, and channel injection attacks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm Pedro Cabrera, the founder of my own company, Ethan Shield. And I'm in love with the software defined radio, as you are uh, going to see in this presentation. I've been uh, working a long time with uh, network mobile operators doing pen testing and, uh, well, doing some kind of uh, security research. And uh, also in love with drones and drone hijacking attacks. I love them. Ham radio and, and drone photography. I don't like to talk about me. I prefer to talk about this presentation. I divided five main uh, sections. I uh, would like to introduce you a little bit uh, the HBB TV uh, system and how we can receive digital television in our Linux box. Once we learn how to receive television, then we will be able to move forward into the channel injection. We will transmit our own channel. We will play a little bit with the different uh, receiving stations, antenna facilities and so on, playing with the uh, attack's scope or impact. And finally, we will move towards the URL injection attack, targeting the smart TV browser and of course, why not, conclusions. So HBB TV uh, stands for Hybrid Broadband and Broadcast Television. It's like kind of thing we are uh, every day hearing about uh, customized advertising. Televisions have been there from, uh, since uh, 1940 and they are just uh, passive boxes that receive signals from the broadcast signal and made their magic to turn into audio and video. But in 2009, Whoop, thank you. Sorry. European uh, came with a project merging two existing projects, German and French project, to say, hey, why not to make interaction, interactivity television so we can offer uh, customized advertising to the audience? And how they achieve this design? If you uh, take a look at the right of the screen, you will see a red bidirectional arrow because the smart TV receives from the broadcast signal an URL, a URL, sorry, and will send his uh, get uh, request to this web server. Nothing new, it's just a web server. But through this web page, it's called in the standard, it's called an application. Television and web server will interact. So in that case, the, the audience uh, watching TV with their remote, they are able, able sorry, to interact with the uh, TV channel. And uh, let me introduce you a very uh, generic, this is of course a simplification of a generic TV uh, network diagram. I want just to share with you the key elements. Generate uh, the content, it's uh, at the left. Think about reporters traveling with these bands with a huge uh, satellite dish on top. They are transmitting uh, content on real time towards through an uh, acquisition network to the main head end. They are receiving content from TV studios, reporters, third parties, whatever. They need to take all this content and process, let's say, to be ready to be available in all the TVs. If we are talking about a national TV channel, all the TVs in the country are, must receive this uh, signal. So this is made through a distribution network. Signal, it's processed and then delivered to the whole country through this distribution network, okay? And HBB TV relies in the digital video broadcast standard. There are three different flavors, satellite, terrestrial, and cable. We will focus, as the, we are talking about the smart TVs at home, we will focus just in the terrestrial one, DVB-T. I don't know why, but in Spain we like to rename things with a different name. So we rename this as TDT. Uh, of course, if anyone is going to look any specification, it's nothing about TDT. It's DVB terrestrial, DVB-T. And they are using a, th these parameters, they are very low parameter. Each country could uh, have different implementations. There are different modulations, different bandwidths, different uh, car interval and, and so on. But I just want uh, to make sure that all these uh, parameters will be in account for later configurations. And if you have been playing around with RTL SDR, it's really nice that they are at somehow, they are related in history. 
when I started to play with RTLSDR, uh, of course I think all of us we are doing with spectrum analysis and there is a maximum of this sample rate. We can uh, not uh, go in below 2.4 mega samples per second. It's supposed that some people achieve a higher values 3 but wait a, wait a minute. I just told you that the channel bandwidth is 8 megahertz. How these devices are able to treat 8 megahertz channel bandwidth but when I we want to play with them there is only 2 mega samples per second or 2 megahertz is the same. You guys wonder like what? Why because of that? So in order to understand that I want to show you this uh, again is a simplification of the DVVT receiver diagram. There are two main uh, elements. The tanner is the first element that will take data from the analog to digital conversor. When you, you look on the internet for these RTL SDR devices, I'm sure you will realize there are different tanners, Raphael 820 or Elonix 1000, uh, sorry, E4000. This is the tanner where we select our frequency. And we'll give this frequency to the next element, is the demodulator. And Eric Fry in 2010 realized that if we change this device driver, we are able to bypass the hardware demodulator. Hardware demodulator is able to treat this 8 megahertz signal and of course the modulate generating this MPEG2 transport steam signal that finally will be the multiplex into audio, video and metadata if what we are wondering is to watch TV. But they find out that changing the drivers we are able to bypass this hardware demodulator and the real tech, the RTL 20A32, it's able to give us raw IQ sample. This is what we are using and because of this uh, different engineering mood, let's call this our secret mood or user mood, the chipset is not going to give us any more 8 megahertz bandwidth. This is this uh, kind of limit between 2.4 and 3.2 mega samples per second coming from. If we focus in the, the modulator, this is a, a standard diagram of the, all the elements in charge of the signal in order to give us an MPEG2 transport stream. And we are going, we would like to do that by our own in our computer using GNU radio. That's what Bodgan Diakonescu created in 2013 in his project GR DVVT. After two years, I think 2015, he donates this project to the GNU radio project under the GR DTB. Much more, it's not just a DVVT, there are much more digital television standards we can receive and transmit. So, uh, also, there is also, sorry, Ron Economus, he created DTV utils. With these utils, we are able to transmit DVVT with our Blader F. And it's really easy to adapt these scripts to use another kind of SDR, generic SDR like HackRF, LimeSDR, and so on. So, all the parameters, if you remember at the beginning of the DVVT, Spanish DVVT in this case, we need to configure all these workflows. It's not just a standard plug and play that we run the GNU radio diagram and we will see television in our computer. We need to adapt these scripts with our implementation, our country implementation of this terrestrial television. We are finishing this introduction is just to let uh, these elements and come on. What is this multiplex? We are talking about digital television. The, what changed from analog, the previous one, is if you realize in these frequencies when you take your channels list, there are a lot of different channel stations sharing the same frequency because they are multiplexed. In the same signal, if you, if you use HackRF and we tune into this uh, single's frequency, we will see just a bunch of 8 megahertz signals and inside they are the different channels station multiplexed. That was doesn't mean. If uh, we use the HackRF sweep utility, this very nice view of the whole TBS spectrum, we can take the whole 400 megahertz and we don't need anymore to go to these GIF pages where we are have listed uh, the TV stations and frequency that is always a nightmare. A lot of the different uh, TV manufacturers have problems with these channels. The lower ones or the higher ones frequency, most of the times they don't uh, have problems, sorry, to tune. It's a different way to see all these channels in the same time. The same could be achieved using the RTL SDR. If you know this utility, the RTL underscore power, will generate a CSV file 
and uh, using a Python utility, we can transform into a nice image like this one. So it's the same. Same different, sorry, the only difference is the HackerF is real time and uh, RTL it needs to treat this information offline. But we will generate a nice view of the whole TBX Pentrun and we will find out who is transmitting and the frequencies. And let me finish with this uh, background of hijacking. When we want to do a channel injection or uh, hijack television, we look uh, backward to the history. There are two uh, nice uh, <laughs> occasions in the past in 1986 and 1987. Captain Midnight and Max Headroom. This is taken from the Wikipedia, of course. These two uh, real cases of TV channel hijacking were in the United States. One is, the first one is, was a satellite signal being uh, impersonated, and the 1987 was uh, two, uh, two different interruptions with a man with this mask uh, singing and doing strange things. Also in the Lebanon in 2006, uh, anti Hezbollah propaganda was being uh, used to, well, impersonate. And if we focus in the smart TVs, what's going on so far? Probably you will remember Weeping Angel, CIA, WikiLeaks, that uh, you, we can turn a Samsung smart TV into a microphone, but this attack requires local access in order to do this exploitation. 2015, uh, theoretical attacks about this uh, hijacking uh, start to grow. And two years ago, Rafael Schill in 2017, hacking the smart TV presentation show how to exploit two different vulnerabilities of two different Samsung smart TVs. Uh, I think one was JavaScript and Flash video vulnerabilities. But he uses a real, was not uh, SDR, was a uh, proprietary uh, transceiver to transmit his uh, signal, his poison signal, let's call this, using a Windows software, everything proprietary. That was one of my main motivations to create this. I'm not focusing my work, my research in manufacturers, specific manufacturers, manufacturers sorry, or zero day. Just to create an open source methodology so we can play with our SDR devices, any of them, not just one manufacturer, HackerF, BladerF, whatever, with open source softwares in order to research our smart TVs vulnerabilities. So, let's move forward with our first attack, the channel injection. What we would like to do now is to transmit our own TV signal, so we are going to impersonate with our uh, equipment, with our laptop, the whole TV network. We will transmit with our SDR device. We can transmit using the radio or we can transmit using the wire, okay? How we achieve this, how we accomplish this mission? We need to take our poison video file and we need to put some ingredients because the video file need to add some parameters, some metadata in order of the television uh, the modulator to take this signal as a valid one. Once we forge this uh, valid transport stream, we will broadcast the transport stream with the GRDTV utility and of course we will be on air. In order to take this or generate this transport stream video, this poison file, we could use, as we are just talking about a uh, video or channel injection, we can use a very simple attack using FFMPEG. We could take any video file with any codec and output into a transport stream and put all the parameters you have uh, below, network ID, and stream, sorry, ID, service ID, and so on. We need to take this exactly the same parameters as the valid channel we, are, we want to replace or to impersonate. Or we can use OpenCaster. OpenCaster is much more complicated. It's not a command line. It's a Python script. But we have all the parameters. Later on, for the URL injection attack, we will need OpenCaster. Again, we need to modify all these four parameters. And how to take these parameters when we face our face our first sorry project? We don't know these parameter values. But using Caffeine, for example, a nice desktop uh, utility to watch TV on Linux, double clicking on uh, the channel station will come up this small window and will show up not only the frequency but the network ID, the stream ID, all the parameters we need to impersonate are there. If we don't like, you don't like desktop uh, graphical utilities, 
we can use the VV5 scan inside the VV5 tools. It's just command line and will create a text file with once per uh, channel and all the parameters inside. So it's really easy. We take all these parameters, we forge our own transport stream, and that's the original television antenna, the white one. Blader F using a small antenna. I'm ready. This is not still uh, transmitting, it's waiting. We saw we are watching TV, Spanish uh, 24 hour news channel. So we are start transmission. Pedro on air. Here we are injecting our own channel. <laughs> Once we stop the attack, the original channel we came back because we are impersonating, impersonating, sorry, the same parameters. So we could do a, sorry, a persistent attack or just a quick attack to, uh, I don't know, to uh, show our neighbors or fathers or family, whatever, some kidding. But what if we want not just attack, th th this is the most simple attack. But thinking about how these antennas distribution, uh, it's not a network, but how antenna distribution works, we could think because radio uh, sometimes is complicated and expensive. If we want to attack some uh, distant uh, house or whatever, we need to add on top of this uh, blade ref, power amplifiers, filter, directional antenna, and this is going to be a cows. But sometimes it's much more easier to identify our antenna facility. Antenna facilities distribute the signals. Once it's been received from the antenna through the hall, think about a huge building, there's only one or two antennas on the floor and they are distributing the same, distributing an amplifier, the same signal through the whole building or residential area. So we can point on all the residential area or our target. In order to do that we need to study how this uh, antenna facility is being designed. Usually this is the most simple and easy ones. We see two wires coming from the top they are the terrestrial and satellite antenna and there it's been splitted into three outputs, one per each house. More complex uh, uh, facilities has a huge uh, amplifiers because in this case this is a big residential area an antenna facility was really outside in a huge tower so they need to amplify a signal coming from the antenna and then it's been divided with these two splitters. This is a cascade installation. This splitter, they are each module of the residential uh, area has its own different module with again new amplifier and new splitter. If we realize the attack, if, sorry, if we, if we design, if we uh, inject our channel at the beginning, we will poison the whole residential area. If we poison our signal uh, in the house that we want to attack, we are just attacking one house. I want to show you how we can do that. This is a very small installation. There are just two televisions. But this is really. Sorry. Here we are. Yes. There are two televisions. I'm removing the original wire coming from the roof with the original antenna. So signal will go out. We will lost the signal. You will see that televisions treat this uh, event in different way showing Blader F is already transmitting, oh no, no, not sorry, it's not already, I'm just going to plug our poison signal and now we are transmitting with the your DTV util, sorry. Here I am, first one is receiving my signal, I don't know why, is first of all and the second but they are synchronized if you realize. Even if one takes more time, they are uh, doing this demodulation process not at the same speed but I will remove again the wire and when the original signal came both of these two televisions will be again synchronized, I mean content. I want just to show you that this is not uh, Photoshop or video editing uh, proof of concept that the signal came in the same time proving that we can attack more than one televisions in one attack. 
And of course, we are always talking about drone attacks. It's really uh, easy to attack an antenna if we are using a drone because we can hover in the antenna facility and we don't need to get inside the building and get uh, access to the building or whatever. So I want to test how easy is to rent a drone because I don't want to use my drone for that. <laughs> Who knows? And I have a very huge uh, problem. I really don't know the amount, how much weight can carry one of these commercial drones. These drones, this is a Phantom 3 or Phantom 4, they are not manufactured to carry any load. So there is no specification from the manufacturer about the amount of weight they are able to carry. But we have a lot of the videos on YouTube of crazy people taking these buckets full of water with a rope and they start to fly. They are measuring uh, 500 grams, one kilograms. They are really crazy. So after seeing a lot of these crazy videos and finding this web page, I get myself a limit, 300 grams. That was the weight I need for my payload. And that fits perfectly with a hacker F, a power bank, and the Odroid C2. I was not, uh, it was for me impossible to do this attack with a Raspberry P3. I, I already tried, believe me, a lot of times, but doesn't have a computational resource enough to do our transmission constantly in time and we want our big team to really realize and see our video. So I'm using an Audro AC2 and all of this setup is just 300 grams. So we need to do this design to be really stick and not to move in the drone. For the dynamics flight, if we are flying with uh, components moving, our gravity center is going to be moving and for sure the drone is going to finish on the floor and crashing. So take these three elements, stick them very good, adapt our scripts because the Odroid C2 is not able to generate content in real time. Everything is doing the Odroid is transmitting the already poisoned video generated in another computer. And after a few days working, I think it should be sound in this video. Thank you guys. That is a real uh, drone attack. So now it's not just a theoretical attack, it's a practical attack. And let me just uh, sum up because these three videos are just proof of concept. I don't have any uh, governmental or uh, private company support in order to demonstrate that these videos or these attacks could be m done much wider, not just focusing on one smart TV. Because of these uh, television networks, uh, they are designed and there are a lot of elements from the head, if you remember at the beginning, the, the head and once is generate this uh, transport stream, it's been distributed but in a very stupid way. They trust each other. So if we inject this uh, poison video but not in our house, if we are able to inject in the main head end, we will inject this video to the whole country. Of course they need insider, uh, not uh, attack, but uh, we need uh, some uh, deep internal network knowledge or uh, someone inside of this company that help us to carry on with this attack if we want to focus the head end. Transmitter centers, they are more, much more easier because they are not, there's no one uh, national one, they are a lot of transmitter center primary ones 
And my favorite ones, they are the gap filler. Gap filler is a very stupid repeater. They have two antennas. One antenna receives television, the, receives, sorry, the original signal, and amplifies this signal towards this shadow area. So if we take the same drone and we do realize the same attack, and instead of hoovering the antenna, we hoover over the gap filler, our signal is going to be transmitted to all this area. It's a very nice attack, but of course, in order to demonstrate, we need uh, some permission and some someone that help us in order to do these videos that I don't have. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Okay, we show. I show you how to inject uh, just video. This is the the, the most uh, funniest attacks. But as we mentioned at the beginning, HBBTV uses an URL. If we uh, do a, a ARP poison attack to our smart TV. We will see that every five seconds, five or to three seconds, the smart TV is sending this get HTTP get request to those servers. If you realize they are just web servers, I don't know why they like to put this HBBTV.s at the domain name, but anyway, they are standard web servers. I think this is the way they are measuring our uh, audience, our which channels we are watching everyone. This is not an attack, I just I want to show you because this is European how this is worth the if your live television it's off. I'm just starting the ARP poison attack. I will put on TV and show you how these channels are every s just two seconds, three seconds with this. These are the original, the legit, legit, sorry, HTTP request. La Uno, this is the main national TV channel in Spain. And there we are with this, uh, I don't know what they call this application, Red Button. This is the H ABB, HBB TV, sorry, application called Red Button. This is how it should work. And what we want to do right now, we are not taking care of the video file. What we want to take care of now is uh, metadata, a new, a new parameter in the URL. And now probably, we don't want to inject video. If, if you think about this attack, I want my victim not to be realized that it's under attack. He will continue watching the original TV. We will do a video replay. He will get the original video of the original channel because we are going to use another SDR to take the original video and we will inject this original video. It's not being modified, but the attack will be, the attack, sorry, will be in the URL. We will poison only the URL, maintaining only the original video. That can all be done using OpenCaster. We need to replicate this short kind of uh, reverse engineering because we need to maintain all the original parameters of our, this uh, TV channel or TV station. And only thing, the only thing we need to modify is these three parameters of the applications, the name, route, and path. And let me show you that inside the Smart TV there are two browsers. The HBB TV browser, it's totally transparent for the user, and the user browser for sure. User could open a huge or fancy uh, browser in order to read newspaper or whatever. So each attack or the attacks I'm going to show you could be modified or vary if we want to attack HBB TV browser or the user browser. We know which browser we are attacking because of the user agent. Once we have this get request in our poison or uh, the web server, taking care of the, or taking a look, sorry, of the u user agent, if you realize for the Samsung TV, the first one is HBB TV 1.2.1, meaning that we are talking to the HBB TV browser. And the black one, the Mozilla, is the user browser. Both of them, leak very important information about manufacturer and model. What does it mean? That we can scan smart TVs remotely if we just are listening for this URL, URL sorry, with our fake transmission, we are able to scan for smart TV, public IP addresses, model and manufacturers, and the channel because we could use a different URL per channel. Let me show you because there is a lot of uh, information. Let me show you 
I'm gonna use four terminals. In the upper left is the DVVV sub. We'll just use our uh, RTL SDR to tune the original channel. With the DVV snoop, I want to take this uh, original video and put uh, into our uh, transport stream file. With the bottom left <laughs> TSCB air maxer, I will poison only the URL. I will maintain all the parameters, but I will just modify the URL. And finally, with the GR DVVT, I will transmit this poison signal to our victim. Yup. That's again the same white <laughs> antenna. This is the second SDR. This is a no elec, very tiny SDR device with the original antenna. Laptop is ready for the tag. It's not yet doing anything, it's just been ready. And television. There is no URL, sorry for the because it's really complicated to record and to be doing all the rest of the stuff. I will now start to tune the Small LTL SDR device. I'm tuning the television. I will start to record to a file, transport the stream file. A few seconds of uh, buffer, let's call this like a buffer. And now we are modifying, I am injecting the URL and now I am transmitting. You don't see any difference because I'm using the same video. But now, DEFCON 27 index 4, this is my person URL. Now I can scan your smart TV. I could be able to take your manufacturer, model, and public IP addresses. As I am attacking all of these TV channels multiplexes, if the user do something and change to another channel, we will continue scanning his preferences of channel <laughs> and audience. I'm very bad with this sapping uh, uh, process, but uh, index 2, if you realize, I will pause the video. The upper request is uh, DEFCON 27 index 4 and below request is uh, index 27 index, sorry, DEFCON 27 index 2. That's how we can scan or poison different channels. Now that we are able, thank you very much. If we think all the options that we have, now that we are able to forge and use our own web server to attack our victims, I think that after so many years playing around with these uh, web pages, captive web pages, I think about, of course, social engineering. We could create an advanced exploit in order to take the Wi Fi information from the smart TV because, of course, smart TV is connected to the Wi Fi. But why not just ask our victim, the attendees, hey, guy, I am your smart TV. I just been upgraded. I really would like to confirm with you your Wi Fi network. Could you be so kind, please, to let me know? Sorry. Yep. Here we are. Could you be so kind to let me know what's your Wi Fi? <laughs> Big one theory. <laughs> okay. I will use a text file. It's empty. I will store the Wi Fi answer of our attendee, of our audience in this text file. We are transmitting now our poison URL. Television is start to render. Dear user has been successfully upgraded. As we have been scanning, we can create a really nice captive web page with our manufacturer image. And of course, this is just a proof of concept and I will publish for you. So I don't want to give you a real, uh, let's say, social engineering. And when he typed the Wi-Fi, we have the user input. Once he accepts, uh, it's just second try, he some random characters just to show you this proof of concept. It's an O's. Once the user accept, if we check this text file content, has the user input. <laughs> this applause is not deserved because this is just a stupid web server. You realize this is the powerful of this methodology. We could create very 
creative attacks towards the final user of the smart TV. Same with the key login. And that doesn't make sense uh, in the HPV TV browser because the HPV TV browser is uh, passive. That makes sense only with the user browser. And same with the crypto mining attacks. Think about if we are able to inject this crypto mining JavaScript in, I don't know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of smart TVs, they will be so kind as to do this crypto mining for us. Maybe we are retired in two days, I don't know. I really would like, but as you know, this is uh, Monero, CoinHive Monero, and they uh, stopped the service, I think, March this year. It's really a pity. Let me show you. Uh, the difficult uh, side here, if you have been playing with this uh, Monero CoinHive, is the auto start feature. You don't want the user to press the button start to start mining, right? You want this to be an automatically attack. Uh, long time ago, the auto start feature was uh, publicly available to everyone to modify. But of course, as this uh, was used in a lot of web pages uh, illegally or to do some this kind of attacks, uh, Conhive uh, removed the auto start feature and forced the user to do uh, this uh, manual start. So uh, an anonymous uh, friend let me the original JavaScript code so I don't, uh, we don't need the auto start uh, press, it will start automatically this uh, crypto mining. Once we change uh, the channel to take this uh, poison URL, I'm using this uh, small square. We are, if you realize, the second request is the JavaScript. We inject the JavaScript file, la sexta slash simple ue mean dot gs. This is the small JavaScript file in order to start mining. So I will start in the Wireshark. I will change the filter to show you the Conhive IP address. Everything was under HTTPS, so we don't know, we don't have the the HTTP request, but we will see all the HTTPS communications from the smart TV towards the CoinHive web servers mining. And uh, also I was wondering what else we could uh, do with our smart TV, the browser. We would like to face the user browser. If you remember Beef application, Beef uh, software, to hook the browsers. I want to use uh, ng, I, I love this utility, EtherCap from uh, Socketable. ng uh, EtherCap will be in charge of inject this uh, hook.javascript uh, file to hook the user browser. When I hook the user browser, I will use beef, just as a very simple application, to create an invisible frame. And what for? We will have Metasploit running with the auto pound. And of course, in this invisible frame, we are going to Smart TV to listen to Metasploit out upon. In that moment, Metasploit will be scanned for vulnerabilities in our Smart TV browser. And here we are. Everything is ready. I want to show you the editor cap JavaScript file. Everything we need to modify here it's uh, the URL of our hook dot yes, uh, hook, let's say uh, JavaScript file. Of course it's locally. Ethercap is ready. Beef is already being uh, started, listening to any browser being compromised. And now the user will open his favorite newspaper. As you see below, new hooked browser ID, blah, 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 browser and now hooked domain, El Mundo. No this is the newspaper. We have hooked the browser now. Move to Metasploit, copy the URL created for the autopound. Here we are with the beef, modules, invisible frame, 
del nuestro país. Estamos frente a un engaño que lleva meses viviendo del simbolismo de la épica. Tras la celebración de este pleno que ha legitimado Puigdemont, crecen And there is this running. You can check all of the models are looking for vulnerabilities in the Smart TV user browser. Thank you. So it's uh, real easy to conclude this first conclusion probably you are aware that uh, the principle of these attacks is the lack of authentication in the radio ledger. There is no authentication at all. This vulnerability or this flag of design is uh, also the same for the GPS. We could create with SDR device our own GPS constellation. None of the GPS clients We'll try to authenticate ourselves. And same for the network, for the mobile networks. Probably you are aware that 3G and 4G mobile, fake mobile networks, at some stage of the process, they will do a mutual authentication. But does this mutual authentication take place after the identification? We still nowadays have 3G MC catchers and 4G MC catchers. And the base of these attacks is because the mobile device is unable to authenticate this signal. They will always pick the best signal, the stronger one. That's it. It's the same basic of these attacks. So probably it's time in order to implement some kind of authentication in the lower levels. And in the other hand, when we uh, always go to buy a smart TV, I think I don't know the percentage, but probably 99% of us, we are just concerned about size, inches. The amount of is the inches of our smart TV, bigger, lower, that's everything that we care about the smart TV. But probably after seeing these uh, attacks, probably it's time to think about, same as smartphones, about security, about the operative system underlying our, our smart TV. I want to have a smart TV that uh, from time to time patches all these vulnerabilities and take a secure browser, not any browser from I don't know where in, in time or in place. I want uh, some operative system taking care of security if I want to connect my smart TV to the internet <laughs> that I will not recommend to anyone. So thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Gonzalo Pepe, Alvaro, and Nob, that they helped me a lot with this uh, research. To record these videos was not been easy at all. Uh, of course, I want to thank all of you to be here with me today. Thank you very much.